Welcome to the Richard Sherman Podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel to get more content. We coming at you two times a week. Subscribe now. Welcome back to the Richard Sherman Podcast. It's week five. And I'm going to start it off by saying this. Gino. Gino. 139.7 passer rating. 16 for 25. 268. Three touchdowns. No interceptions. So efficient. Your boy, Kenneth Walker Jr., eight carries, 88 yards after a serious injury to Rashad Penny. So we're praying for him in his health. But they weren't able to pull it out. You know, Mitchell, I got to go talk to Pete because this defense, uh, they got to they gotta go back to what they know. Like, we're trying, they're trying this quarters too high scheme, and it's just like you got to go back to what we know, bread and butter. Who would have thunk coming into the season, you lose the franchise quarterback, it's rebuilding year, you know, you got Geno Smith and Drew Locke battling it out in training camp. This Seahawk offense is looking like a legitimate top 10 offense in this league right now. Geno Smith looks like he's going to be playing in the NFL for the next five to 10 years. I mean, my goodness. And then we're seeing Kenneth Walker give the opportunity. The Seahawks are a competitive team. You talked about it from the jump. Week one, you said they were going to be competitive all year. They should have won this game. They let it get away from them down the stretch. But you're right, Rich. Th this defense is, oh, my goodness, terrible. But you know what defense isn't? That Niners defense, Mitchell. Oh. That Niners defense is as good as they get, and they just beat up right now, man. That's, oh, my God, that the injury to E-Man, like, oh. Richard, like I'm praying that the it's just name like of the weeks. game is availability. I mean, Nick Bosa's out. E-man's out. Your boy Jimmy Ward's broken hand. I mean, Robbie Gold got freaking smoked twice. I mean, at what yeah, point are I, injuries I, too much, man? Well, I mean, at the end of the season, Metro, at, in the playoffs, they're too much. Because you think about this. You think about the 49ers kind of weathering the storm. They're 3-2 and two right now. They're rolling. They got a schedule that's favorable. They got to play the Atlanta Falcons. So they're going right back to the Greenbrier. Mitchell, I know time at the Greenbrier. I had me a good time at the Greenbrier. Um, but they usually have success when they stay East Coast on these East Coast trips. And I'm expecting that to continue. Jimmy G is start, finally starting to look like himself. He's finding his ry rhythm. When you don't have a training camp, it takes a while to knock the rust off. I know people think you just get back on the bike and start riding. That's not how it works. Like, you got to rebuild it. You got to get back used to the speed of the game. You got to see the defenses. You got to see the things happening over and over and over. You got to get reps. And that's what he's doing. Uh, but before he went out, E-Man had a pick six. He's from North Carolina. He did it in North Carolina, man. That was big time. My boy Hefe, Jeff Wilson Jr., 17 carries, 120. And Jimmy G, efficient, 18 to 30, 253, two touchdowns. And Baker. Baker, no touchdowns, 20, 20 for 36, 215. I mean, not an awful game, but just not enough. You know, what they're, what they're expecting from Baker, they're not going to get, I don't think, not anytime soon. Oh, Rich, the Panthers are ridiculous stat of the week. One in 27 under Matt Rule when allowing 17 plus points in a game. Uh, that Matt is, Rule going to have to go back. That, he going to go back terrible. to college too. But Rich, I mean, back to the 49ers, because we talked about it last week. They, they were missing an identity. Their, their, their biggest strength on offense became their biggest weakness, you know? And it seems that, and you said it, Kyle Shanahan, this is going to be the biggest test of his career with Trent Williams going down, banged up on the running back core, et cetera, et cetera. Injuries mounting. And here we see it. You know, they, they established a running game. They controlled this game from the beginning. It was an easy win for them. I know Carolina's not the best team in the in the league. You know, they're not even remotely close to it. But they do have a solid defense. And at the end of the day, the Niners put up 37. Their offense carried the load today. Defense does what it always does. But if this Niners offense can get rolling, look out. And we got to talk about Charvarius more. We got to talk – Ward. Charvarius Ward. We got to keep talking about him because – my goodness, he's not getting interceptions, but he's having impact week in and week out, saving touchdowns. I mean, he got two PBUs in the end zone this game alone, had one last week against Allen Robinson. I mean, he's strapping. He is strapping. They paid him all that money, and people are like, who's Jarvarius Ward? This is who he is. Mooney is out there doing his thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> Mitchell, I got to clear my throat. <clears throat> because those Rams, <clears throat> like it got <clears throat> rough, Mitchell. They are going against 
the Dallas Cowboys. Now you're thinking Dallas Cowboys got Dak Prescott, really talented roster. They had a they had a good team last year. You got to expect him to have some set success. But no, they're going against Cooper Rush. No offense to Cooper Rush, but Cooper Rush has been having a solid season. He's doing his thing. He completed ten passes in the game, Mitchell. Ten. Hmm. 10, 10 passes in a game. He threw for 102 yards. Matt Stafford threw for 308. Mitchell, they didn't score more than 10 points. They scored 10 points, Mitchell, in the fourth quarter this season. Matt Stafford, zero touchdowns, four interceptions. And now everybody's like, well, he has a patchwork offensive line. So does everybody else. So does everybody. Everybody got a patchwork offensive line right now. Nobody was giving Matt Ryan. They moved a left tackle to right tackle. Center went out the game, moved the rookie left tackle, like, with two days of preparation, and nobody was like, Matt Ryan's behind a patchwork offensive line. Like, This Rams team is looking a heck of a lot like the Denver Broncos right now, man. I mean, what is the problem with them offensively? They got, you know, they got Stafford. I know you're not the biggest, biggest fan, but, I mean, they still got – they still got a lot of pieces, and they got the mastermind head coach, the offensive guru, that this team just looks pedestrian right now. What is the biggest problem with the L.A. Rams? Well, they're going against a Dan Quinn defense. That's the first part. Like, Dan Quinn is legitimate. Like Dan Quinn, we went to two Super Bowls with Dan Quinn, and guess what? He went to the next Super Bowl after that with the Atlanta Falcons. He knows how to call the defense, especially knows how to call the front. Uh, and he has Micah Parsons going crazy. He had two sacks in the game. Tony Pollard is finally getting some runs. You got to think about this. Think about this, Mitchell, because, because people keep saying what I said about Dak Prescott was crazy. Like, Dak Prescott shouldn't, just because you're making a lot of money doesn't mean that, that he should be starting over the guy if the other guy's playing better. Guess what? Zeke got 22 carries today. Tony Pollard got eight. Tony Pollard had 86 yards. Zeke had 78. You know why Zeke is getting more carries? Mitchell, answer it for me, please. He's being paid more, Richard. And the GM. He's being paid more. The GM and the head coach feel obligated to give him a little bit more run. And Richard, you called it from the beginning of the year. We have the audio recording. You said Tony Pollard was going to be your breakout player of the year. Am I right or no? You're right. You're right. <clears throat> because we played against him. He's explosive. He's a heck of a runner. Wait. I called I that, remember. Rich. I said I was Tony say, Pollard I was, like, was going to be the breakout player this year, and he has proven me right, Rich. Week in, week out, he's given this offense another piece. And I think I think they got to put the money aside. They got to take the Pete Carroll approach. Let Tony Pollard carry the load. This team is on to something, Rich. Yeah, they're definitely on to something. I mean, Cooper Rush is 4-0 this year. I mean, they got decisions to make because Dak may come back next week. They got the Philadelphia Eagles. Are they going to play Dak Prescott? Like fresh off the bench, or are they going to stay with the hot hand in Cooper Rush? He didn't have the greatest game, but he didn't throw any interceptions. He was 10 for 16 for 102. He ran the offense. They need to give Tony Pollard more carries. I mean, you got 30 carries between both of them, and Tony Pollard only had eight of them, but he had 88 yards, like 86 yards, and you need to get him more yards. That defense is humming, though. I mean, Dan Quinn, Diggs gave up a little, a little pass in the slot. Obviously, Cooper Cup took it the distance, but – Things like that happen. It's man-to-man -man coverage. He ran through the defense. Ah, so, sometimes stuff happens. That was our only touchdown of the day. Like, if your only touchdown of the day comes on a 77-yard explosive, like from, from over route, like, yeah, you got to fix some things. Richard, we talked about it at the beginning of the year, and this is the problem with having historical audio that can be dug up from the depths. We said the NFC East was a dumpster fire. How wrong were you? And I, I agreed with you. How wrong were we? I mean, right now, Mitchell, we're looking like the, the backside of a donkey. Mitchell, we're looking very bad. It's very rough. The, the Giants went out to London town and dismantled the Green Bay Packers in A-Rod. If you would have told me that Saquon would be doing what he's doing right now, Daniel Jones would go out there and out A-Rod in London, like they'd be 4-1, and one, Day Bowl would be the front runner for coach of the year, like I, I would have, I would have flew to Detroit on the first thing, smoking Metro and, and gave you one of the, a quick, <laughs> no, stop <laughs> it. Stop it. You're I, insane. I would have expected it as well, Rich. I mean, this giants team looks like they might be for real this year. I mean, it's hard to believe you said Daniel Jones, but Saquon Barkley, Barkley might be the MVP offensively right now. I know you're high on, on Josh Allen, but non quarterback, 
offensive MVP. Saquon is back, Rich, and he's providing this offense with uh, with a game breaker every play. But to see what they did to the Packers and A Rod, I mean, Richard, what, what what is the ceiling for these New York Football Giants? I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm so blown away right now. I'm shocked. I'm in shock. I'm in shock and awe mode because. This is crazy. This is unexpected. I mean, you're doing all this and you still aren't the leader in your division because the Philadelphia Eagles are 5-0 and and Jalen Hurts is playing out of his mind, his receivers. But that defense, that offensive line and that defensive line give them a chance every week because they are going to be tough to deal with. That's one thing, like no matter what, if you got a good offensive line, a good defensive line, it gives your quarterback time. It gives your playmakers time. It gives your DBs time to react and make plays. My goodness, but I would have never had Daniel Jones beating A-Rod. I'm sorry, A-Rod needs more weapons. Like, they're going to have to make a trade. They're going to have to make a trade. Watson got hurt early in the game. Like, they're going to have to make a trade. They tried to go in and make it happen with these young guys. I mean, you got to look at it. Randall Cobb had seven catches for for 99 yards. Like, they're, they're depending on the old guard. I mean, if he had anybody, they're probably calling Odell every second of the day. Yep. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sure A-Rod is sending them that, hey, stranger, you up? Text every day. <laughs> like, I know he has to be because he needs him. He needs Odell would make a huge difference to this Green Bay Packers team. But Odell's just, you know, he, he's not ready yet, first off. he got to wait till November. And then he's taking his time. This is like college recruiting for, for OBJ. Like, he gets to flirt with everybody. Hey, what you offer me? Mm, that's nice. Okay. Well, that, what you offer me? Cool. Oh, that I hear you. I hear you. I, what you, you, you said? You said, oh, that's nice. Well, I'm going to tell y'all something. Whoever offering the best deal is who going to get OBJ, and he going to want some future promises. Richard, if you are OBJ, the hot ticket name on the free agent market right now, where would you go? I mean, right now, I, I'm, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I know in November. Right now, I'm taking my time. I'm going to the place that has the best future at quarterback because I don't, I don't want it to just be a one-year deal. And who knows if Aaron or Tom is, are going to play past this year. Like, I don't want to deal with that again. I want future. I want – because last year, that's what he did. He was freaking balling for the Rams. They had no, no connection to him past one year, you know. they and, and he got hurt in the Super Bowl and had no security going forward in the future. And that's what would happen, man. It was unfortunate that that he got injured. And I would not go unless I got security for the future. Like he signed a multi-year deal. And most teams aren't going to do that. But the team is going to be desperate enough for his talents like Green Bay. And I think they're going to give him what he's looking for. Now, Richard, we talked about it briefly. I mean, this NFC East is turning into a juggernaut. The Philadelphia Eagles go to Arizona. A closer game than a lot expected. But it shows the grittiness of this team. Walk me through what you liked about this game from the Eagles standpoint. Well, I mean, it's gritty. It's grimy. It's 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 one of those games where everybody's sitting there. It's a trap game. You know, they're like, oh, my God. See, I told you guys the Eagles weren't for real. No, that's the game you battle through. Kyler Murray had a solid game. You know, he had a 28 for 42, 250, a touchdown, was running the ball. He's a tough quarterback to deal with. You know, he's one of those one-offs. And then Jalen Hurts had a bit of an off day, 26 of 36, 239, no touchdowns, no interceptions, 15 rushes for the 61 yards and the two touchdowns that he had. Like, Devontae Smith had eight catches, but it was a gritty, grimy. Like, you had to earn everything you got, play in and play out, play in and play out. And that's how a championship mentality is built. We can win it anyway. We can win it. In a blowout, we can win it where the quarterback doesn't throw a touchdown. We can win it where the quarterback throws four touchdowns. We can throw for 500. We can run for for, for 150. Like, whatever you want to do, it can be a defensive game. And that's when you start believing. And I think in Philadelphia right now, they're really believing. No question about it. I mean, Rich, this kind of reminds me a little bit when Lamar Jackson entered the league and Baltimore out of nowhere just became the hot team, right? I mean, they, they were different, but... I mean, Jalen Hurts is a little bit better arm to him. He's he's great out of the backfield if the play breaks down as well. And let's be honest, in Philly, they're inevitably going to be playing in the snow. They're probably going to have home field advantage when it comes to the playoff if they keep playing like this. Can they weather those elements? I mean, this is a team that has has a better running game now than they had last, last year, and they got a quarterback that can you know make things happen if a play breaks down. I don't want to overhype him, Rich, but – they look like they might be a favorite out of the NFC right now. 
I mean, how, you can't overhype them. They haven't lost a game. You know, I mean, you, you calling it how you see it. They they beaten everybody who's been in front of them so far. I'm excited because the NFC East is eventually going to feast on itself, and so they they're going to have to play the Giants. They're going to have to play the Dallas Cowboys twice. Both teams well, twice. We see that next week, Rich. I mean, they're playing the Cowboys next week. You know, and the Giants are playing the Ravens next week. So this NFC East is about to get tested. We're going to see the who's who. But the reason I talk about overhype is because we saw a team that was a little bit overhyped. Now, the Miami Dolphins. I mean, they, they, they rose way up into your power rankings, Rich. Way up. And my guess is they probably wouldn't even be in your top 15 right now these last two weeks. I mean, they got smacked by the New York Jets. Uh, it was the battle of former 49ers coaches, Mike McDaniels and Robert Sala. And your boy Sala got the best by far. I mean, and, and, and that's what happens when you lose your starting quarterback. That's every team is a starting quarterback away from getting getting their, the brakes beat off of them. And Tua was a huge part of what they did offensively. But Teddy could have got it done. Teddy could have won that game. He could have sure. did things, but they lost Teddy too. And nobody is equipped to walk out there with their third string quarterback against a team in the National Football League and pull out a win. I mean, I don't know anybody equipped like that. Raheem Mostert had him a really good game. It was great to see him back. 18 carries for 113 and a tug. He was looking like him, his old self. I mean, Skylar Thompson looked, tried his best, you know. One thing I got to tell you, Mitchell, you might not know about this. Hey, if you if you got a boss, he going to tell you not to throw on sauce. If you, if you <laughs> look, 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 Mitchell, if you're brushing your teeth and you're starting to floss, you better not throw on sauce. Like Mitchell, you better have Randy Moss if you want to throw on sauce. But if you don't got that, he going to get a book. That kid looks legitimate. I'm so excited for him. The New York Jets, I mean, that you got to think Zach Wilson was having a day. I mean, he had a pretty efficient day. 14 to 21, 210. It kind of started in the fourth quarter of the last game where he started to kind of move the ball and started to trust. But Brees Hall, my goodness, he did it all. He had 100 receiving yards, almost 100 rushing yards. Like, he looks like a guy. And he's doing it in the fall, Rich. I mean, you're rhyming like crazy up here. Richard, I, this is where being a GM and, and being a scout, I got to sit back and scratch my head. You were on the uh, the draft breakdown, right, with Bleacher Report. You, you, you dove in and you, you evaluated a lot of these rookies. And you were surprised when Derek Stingley won above Sauce Gardner. And, and now we're seeing it firsthand. Derek Stingley got a pick today. Great. But Sauce looks like the real deal, Rich. I mean, Stingley you, looks like the real deal, too. I, I'm not discrediting Stingley, but Sauce just looks different, different, Rich. Like, different, different. I mean, he is locking down grown-ass men in his rookie year. And that Jets team, like, this, this might be a team that sneaks up on people the rest of the year. They got weapons, offensive weapons. If Zach Wilson can can elevate his game, I mean, you got Garrett Wilson, you got Elijah Moore, you got Brees Hall, you got Michael Carter. They, these guys are only going to grow and get better and better and better. And then you got your former DC and Robert Sala leading the way. I mean, I know it's early, Rich, but, hey, but tell hey. me, tell me the Jets. Come on, talk to me about Come the on. Jets. I, here. I, look, look, is there a I'm, chance? I'm loving, I'm loving the Jets because they simplified their scheme. The things that they talked about early on in the season, they were like, hey, we had communications break down. Hey, it was a little too complicated. Even Brick, their D coordinator, said, maybe I put a little bit too much on them. I mean, you got a rookie corner. You got guys, this is their first year playing together. It's hard for you to put that much communication on them in their first year. So they simplify it, and you can see the results. They're playing faster. They're moving faster. They look great. They, they inserted Quan Alexander, my guy, Rich. Like, they, they inserted him into the lineup, and he's everywhere like Project Roaches. He's hitting. He's firing up this team. DJ Reed catching one-hand one interceptions but stepping out of bounds. Stay in bounds. Uh, my boy Jay White coming downhill. LaMarcus Joyner making big plays. Like, you can see the energy from that team. Quinnen Williams, you know, they had that big, big, you know, tirade. Quinnen Williams is doing this and doing that. They're sending four-man rushes like he asked. They're sending four-man rushes, and he's rewarding them, and he's getting rewarded by making huge plays. Got him, got himself the football today, and stiff arm Tyreek to the ground, Tyreek to the ground, and like it, they look like they're having fun now, and that's great to see. I mean, the Jets, the Jets had won a game in the AFC in twelve games. I mean, that's tough. They they finally got their first double-digit win in four years. I mean, Salah is making a difference. He sure is. It's the best start since two thousand and seventeen for the Jets, Rich. 
Look out, there's two powerhouses in New York. Who would have thought, right? And then we look to a team that has sunk. I, I, this, they're sinking to the depths at a rapid pace. Newsflash, Pittsburgh Steelers are in some trouble right now, Rich. They got smacked by the Buffalo Bills, and it was nasty right out of the gates. You know, 98-yard pass to Gabe Davis. You know, defensive breakdown. You know, and then fumble on the kickoff return right after that. How do you put a rookie quarterback in that position making his first professional start? They got lucky. They avoided getting the second score put on them, but just had to be so mentally rattling to a rookie to be put into that position right out the gates. I mean, it's hard. It's hard. The game is hard, but you have to put him out there eventually. And, I mean, he still threw for 327, threw for – he had an interception – but when you're going against a juggernaut like that, it didn't matter who you put out there. The Bills are going to get a walk away with a win in this game. Their defense is playing too well. Their offense is playing too well. Gabe Davis, like when you think, oh, man, we got Stephon Diggs under reps. We got him under control. You forget Gabe Davis is a freaking monster. He's 6'4". He's 220. He's fast. He's strong. He's great at the at the point of attack making huge catches, and he made huge catches all throughout the playoffs. That was like his coming out party, and he's looking like he's just continuing where he left off. But you got to give all the credit in the world to their team. I mean, it's unfortunate because it's been yeah, – Tomlin has never had a losing season, and, I mean, I just can't see a way for him getting out of this one and having a winning season. They just don't have the talent. And you see T.J. Watt was like, hey, I see what's going on. Um, let me go ahead and get all this work done while, I'm, while I can. I'm not going to rush back um, to walk into this disaster. And uh, that that happens. Josh Allen, 150 touchdowns in 66 games, third fastest to the 150. Of course, Mahomes was the fastest. And they're going to be facing off each other next week, Rich. And it doesn't get any easier for the Steelers hosting the Buccaneers. So, I mean, Rich, this is the worst start for the Steelers in 33 years. Um, do you keep riding with Kenny Pickett, or is he going to be on a short lease for you if you're uh, Mike Tomlin? Mitchell, you keep riding with him. What, are you going to throw Trubisky back in there, Mitchell, and have and, and, and 10 for 19 for 166 yards and a touchdown? Like, no, you that's, keep riding with the rookie. That's my namesake, Rich. I, I, I'd i toss Mitch back in there, see what he does. You know, he's got to represent the name well at some point. Give him another opportunity here. Uh, Mitchell, he's got Rich. He gotten one more than he should have. I mean, the fact that Kenny Pickett is getting his receivers more involved, I, I think there's more upside with him there, but I, I – if they went over four games this year, I'd be shocked. I'll be honest with you there. There's one thing I do want to bring up before we sign off because there's, there's one play call that just had me scratching my head, and this was the ending of the Chargers and uh, the Browns game. I know you're a huge fan of the head coach at the Chargers, but you know they're up two points, and it's like a Dan Campbell-esque scenario uh, last week. They're at their 45-yard line, 40-yard line, with uh, a minute 15 seconds left. And no timeouts for the Browns. And they elect to go for it on fourth and two. And they, of course, do not convert. Putting the Browns in a position where they could easily win. They, they end up inevitably missing the field goal because kickers are absolutely atrocious this year and forgot how to kick, especially in clutch situa situations. But you as a head coach, why do you put your team in that situation? I mean, what does that do for you as a, as a defense? Is that not the biggest, you know, knock on your confidence? No, it's analytics, Mitchell. Analytics. For all the, the, the positive press that analytics gets, that's when you listen to analytics. I'm sure I, 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 I forget what I read, but it was like the analytics gave them a 50, uh, 56% chance to win if they converted that fourth and two and the game would have obviously been over. They don't have any timeouts. But, right. And the chances drop substantially if they punted the ball, which is, of course, analytics and not football football is hard to analyze it's hard to put analytics into football in situations like that thankfully they were able to come out with the win because that would have been disastrous that would have been oh my god that would have been oh uh, that would have been a lot to explain the next day to your players you lose that game uh, i think the analytics director would have been uh promptly escorted out of la uh on the next flight if they had lost that game he may still be escorted out yeah probably should be for sure richard it's been another you know, great Sunday night. We've got a heck of a guest, and I'm going to let you announce him because this is a big-time name, and I know a good friend of yours. Yeah, I, this week we got my boy, Beast Mode, Marshawn Lynch. Man, it's going to be a big-time episode. I can't wait to have my boy Sean on. Y'all got to check us out on Wednesday. Make sure, y'all, you got to be there or be square. You're going to want you not going to want to miss this one. That's for dang sure. Hit that sub button if you're new. Everybody else... 
Tune in soon.